everyone. Sandy, are you good? Perfect. <laughs> good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel. Um, I actually see a lot of familiar faces out there. So hello um, and some unfamiliar ones as well. And it's very nice to see you all this morning, um, be it in your actual face or just your name on a screen. I'm just so glad you're here with us. So um, I have the pleasure of talking to you about uh, solutions for some of those common issues that come up in sectionals. Um, I have a lot of knowledge, but I sure don't know everything. So if you end up with any questions that I can't answer by the end of the session, um, I will do my best to do some research and get back to you just as a quick heads up there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I am teaching the class called Diagnostic Skill Building. This is part two. This is a direct follow-up from the class that Drew Osterhout taught last night. That was, of course, Diagnostic Skill Building part one. So, <laughs> um, as I mentioned, I'm Rachel Peck. Um, a little bit about me. I, uh, I have a bachelor's in music education, um, as well as a master's in education with an emphasis on learning and technology. So that's kind of where my expertise lies. Um, I have been a uh, public school music teacher for just about 10 years now. Um, so I've taught pre-K all the way up through 12th grade. Um, and then for my barbershop background, I got into barbershop in 2008. Um, my first quartet, um, which I loved so much. Um, and oh, sorry, 2008 with Harmony Explosion, a barbershop summer camp, actually. I sang baritone at that point because like my choir teacher told me it was a challenge and I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. It was fun, although now I sing tenor. Still fun, but in a different way. Um, in any case, I have been directing Jet City's chorus out of Federal Way, Washington since 2018. Um, and I've been in a couple of quartets through my barbershop career. Um, my first one was called The Forget-Me-Nots with my high school choir teacher, actually. Um, and then the second one was Renegade. We ended up placing eighth twice in a row at internationals um, before we decided to part ways. But so in any case, that's that's a little bit of my background. And I've had quite a bit of coaching and training and, and done those things as well. So I'm excited to talk to you today about how to diagnose some issues or rather how to solve those issues you've already diagnosed. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna be able to teach you today, I'm hoping. Uh, as a learner, you should be able to, by the end of today, continue to develop those diagnostic skills you worked with, uh, with Drew yesterday. Specifically though, through the specific techniques tailored for workshopping the common issues with your sections. Um, I also am hoping that by the end of today, you acquire a versatile toolkit of techniques. We're going to draw on my knowledge as well as your knowledge um, for section leaders to confidently and efficiently navigate and resolve common issues that arise during rehearsals. So those are my goals for us today. So um, just as a quick kind of reminder, what are diagnostic skills? Why are they important? How do they help us be better section leaders? Um, I'm actually requesting some information from you at this time. So would anybody like to speak? Just kind of remind us, what is the point of diagnostic skills? Or how are they important to us? Or what are they? You can't fix what you don't understand. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so you might hear a problem happening, um, but before you're able to diagnose the actual uh, issue, right, you, you don't know necessarily how to fix that, right? If you hear something, you're like, uh, cool, I heard this thing happening, uh, dot, 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 right? <laughs> so last night's class and this class are all about that, okay? That's great. Um, that pretty much hits the nail on the head. So let's go ahead and move on. So today, here's our plan. Number one, we're going to determine what you already know about workshopping common issues, and then we're going to fill in some of the gaps. Next, we're going to collaborate on a document to add some potential solutions to common issues you might hear in sectionals. And finally, I'm going to check your knowledge, see what questions you still have, and make a plan for the future, or rather help you to make a plan. 
So um, those of you that were at Drew's class last night, I heard that this partially went well and some people had trouble. No worries. If you're able to join the Menti, go ahead and go to menti.com in your browser and use this code right up here to access that. If you are not able to get there, that's okay. Um, I will be sh screen sharing. You can see the questions you'll be able to answer in the chat. So let me go ahead and put this information into the chat here. You're going to menti.com and you're using code 41754312. And that should gain you access to this right here. Okay, and I see Two people have already responded. Awesome. I'll go ahead and share this so you can see. So basically I'm asking you to rate your confidence with our two main goals today. If you have specific techniques to address common issues already, right? And if you can confidently navigate and resolve common issues. I can see from my data here, seven people have responded and we are, we are almost all of us right in the middle of the scale on both of these things. Good, so this tells me we have um, some knowledge, um, but there's still room for growth, which is great. If there weren't any room for growth, there would be no point in this class. So I'm really glad this is like a, the greatest thing to see. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to my presentation now and move forward. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to go through, through just some, a few common issues and some potential solutions. This is not an all encompassing um, list because that would be impossible. It would be a billion and two slides um, and well, that would be challenging. So I'm just trying to hit the most common ones right now. Uh, I would say probably the number one thing that happens in sectionals is the section just doesn't know their notes, right? And that is not necessarily a dig. In fact, it's not a dig at the members because it might just be a new song or a really challenging part in the song or something where the learning track was unclear or something where there wasn't a learning track, right? Um, so <clears throat> here are just a few things you can do if you're finding that your section doesn't know their notes. Uh, if there's a learning track, you can play it. You can listen to it together without singing. That part's really important. Um, then you can either mouth the words or you can hum quietly before confidently singing along. Um, so if you just play the learning track and you say, okay, everybody just sing through it. One of the things that can happen is your members might just sing the wrong notes just right over the top of the learning track because that's what they've been practicing. Okay. Um, and so they, they're not really able to hear that as well. So it's a good idea to have them listen to it without singing for that first time. Um, and if, if it's a situation where um, you have this whole big song, but it's really just one chunk that's, that's giving you trouble, you don't have to listen to the whole song and do this. You can just isolate that section. And I'm going to use that term quite a few times today to isolate a section. Um, because it's part of just a good practice regimen. So um, moving on, you can teach by rote. If you are confident uh, in the line yourself, which I would hope that you would be, uh, you can sing the line that's giving your section trouble and you can just have them repeat it right back to you. <clears throat> so I actually wanted to show you an example of this um, because it's important to isolate. So I've got just a quick copy of how we sang today. So if I were going to teach the lead line, let's say my section is having some troubles with the second line of music. So let's say they're singing. Um, I hope and pray we'll be together. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't maybe know this as well, it should go. I hope and pray we'll be, those are all the same notes straight across. So by singing pray will be is incorrect, okay? So let's say many members of my section are making that same mistake. Um, 
what I would do is instead of just, okay, I'm going to sing the first line, you're going to sing the second line. Tomorrow's another day, your turn. I hope and pray. Okay, your turn, right? Instead of doing that, I'm going to really break it down to where the issue is. So I'm going to start right at pray will be and get them to just repeat that those three notes, right? I've isolated the issue. Pray will be, have them sing it back. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is start to add things on either side. This is called putting it in context. So once we've isolated the issue, if we just go back to the beginning and say, okay, sing it all the way through, the issue is probably still going to occur. And the reason for that is, is because it's muscle memory. So when you get to the second line and you go, I hope and pray, even the fact of going, I hope and pray, triggers that muscle memory to go, will be, which is incorrect. So. Um, the next thing you want to do is start adding things on either side. So we've got pray will be to and just have them sing that. And then see if you can add the word and. And pray will be and pray will be. OK, and then add hope and then add I and then see if you can add or sing rather the entire line and then add the first line. Right. And any time um, that muscle memory kicks in again and the note is incorrect, just take it back a step. OK, so isolate it a little bit more. If you if you brought it into context, just go back to where you were. Do that again and then bring it back in. OK, so that's another strategy you can use. Um, you can also just ask, you can say, OK, section, um, if you feel confident in this particular line, I'm going to ask that you sing this time. Anybody that's not feeling as confident, go ahead and just um, be silent and listen this time or mouth the words or hum quietly. Right. You have lots of options um, and then go ahead and have them sing it. Now, obviously, like this does not work if your whole section is singing it incorrectly or doesn't know it yet. Um, but if you happen, happen to have like a lot of strong members and then like a couple who are still struggling, this can be a really powerful way to help them out. Um, OK, comparison. I love this one. So you have your section meters, section leaders, no section members pair up and they sing at each other. So they've each got a clean copy of the music in their hands. They need to bring this ahead of time and you have them sing at each other with pencils in their hands. And what they do is they just listen. And any time they sing something different from their partner, they just put a circle around it and they go through the whole song like that. And then at the end, the the idea is your two members who are partnered together are talking to each other and determining, OK, well, here we didn't sing the same thing. So like what happened? Right. And it's not an accusatory. I'm right. You're wrong. You need to sing an A. You were singing a G sharp. Dang you. Right. That's not what's happening. It's OK. We know this needs to sound the same between the two of us. So what happened that it didn't? Right. And what is what is the right way? How do we do it? So it becomes more of a collaborative um, creation of synchronicity rather than like an accusatory situation. Uh, another thing you can do is just um, record a snippet of the of the section of the line that's giving you trouble. So, for example, if again, I was in Harmonize the World um, and they were having trouble with that same part, I might just go. Uh, I hope and pray we'll be together. And then I just send that to all of my section. So that way they can just practice that one line. Um, it's important that they also practice the whole song because, again, that's not putting it in context. So it's possible that muscle memory still will kick in with the, the addition of the beginning line. But it gives them a repetition and it's it's pretty easy to just listen to like one track that's really short, restart it. Right. Um, if you have another method for um, for repetition of that one line, that's great. Like uh, I know that there are some apps you can download that have the ability to like pick a starting and ending point and it'll just loop that one line. So that's another option if they know how to do that or if you can if you're able to teach that they can just loop that one line in their learning track and then extend it to, to put that in context as needed. OK, so. That's a great, um, a great way to do it. Uh, cool. One thing I want to say, and this is going to be true for all of my slides. Um, oftentimes when, when we practice, 
the instinct is to start at the beginning and just sing all the way through because there are lots of parts that we know and they feel really good to sing correctly. We're like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I didn't get that. I'll worry about it later. Yeah, I got it. Um, and the, the danger in that is you end up practicing that error several times incorrectly, building up that muscle memory. Um, and also you're not, you're not focusing on fixing the problem. So it's really important to do that isolation piece. Okay, moving on. Um, the section doesn't know the rhythm. So again, you can listen, you can teach by rote. Those are two just pretty solid. You could do that. The next one is you can speak the rhythm. So let's pick a different line. I'm bored of singing that one. Da -da -da. Also, that doesn't have a very challenging rhythm. Okay, let's take a look at I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang. Um, I am aware that we typically sing the song with quite a bit of rubato, so this would not be like necessarily a straight rhythm as it's written, but let's just pretend for the sake of argument and for the sake of this class that it is. So let's say your section is having trouble with laughed and loved and sang, okay? They're singing something, a different rhythm. So you can have them speak that, I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang. You could have them speak that. You could also have them count it if your section knows how to count or if that's something that your director's worked on or your section has worked on in the past. So, um, and three, four, one, and three, and one, another option. If you don't know how to count and you know this issue is gonna be a problem like before sectionals happen, um, you can actually create words to just pop in there that have nothing to do with the song. And one of the reasons um, that this works is because <laughs> is because like it can be silly and it can first not make the connection between the song at all. So let me come up with an example here quickly. Okay, the dogs are, the dogs are playing in the yard, for example. I, I just picked totally random words and I stuck them on that rhythm. So I wouldn't even say how we sang today. Don't get it out yet. Don't do anything, right? Okay, everybody, here's the rhythm that I'd like you to, like you to copy. The dogs are playing in the yard. And then have everyone say it. The dogs are blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Okay, next... The dogs are laughed and loved and sang. And now everybody's confused, or maybe some of them have started to get it, right? But you're gonna make that transition into, I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang. Because if your brain with its muscle memory looks at this, it very well might just do it the wrong way because you've looked at this and done it the wrong way several times, right? So by adding random words in, it can really help get out of that pattern for a moment and start to build some new pathways. So that's the idea of that one. Okay. Next one, you can add body percussion. <laughs> so this, um, this can be great or it can be super frustrating depending on your members uh, because <laughs> some people really connect with movement and some people it will just distract them a lot but it can still help some so depends on your section depends on you um you can do like let's see tap your head tap your shoulders tap your your knees, which you can't see on the screen, so I'll try to keep it up here for the purposes of this. I'm glad we laughed, or let's see, I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang, something like that. It doesn't have to be that complicated. It could all be clapping. It could be just two elements. Um, but what I would do is try to teach it without the words or on a duh. Okay and then try to add the words in, and then try to sing it with the body percussion, and then try to take the body percussion out. So that's just another way um, that can sometimes be successful in teaching those rhythms. Okay, and the last one, um, not an exhaustive list, just giving you some ideas, is staccato singing. So for staccato singing, you're going to take the line and do exactly that. You're gonna sing staccato, 
Uh, let's see. Okay. So instead of singing, I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang, you would sing, I'm glad we laughed and loved and sang. Right? So you're, you're shortening everything. So it's super, super quick. And when you do this, uh, it can be really helpful for your members that maybe don't realize they're singing the wrong rhythm or don't know where it's happening because you're going to hear super clearly where each of the words fit. And if everybody sings a certain rhythm except for you and you're like, ah, crap, like I put it in the wrong spot, that's going to become immediately apparent to you. And you can ask things like, okay, like where were we not together? And um, was this behind or ahead, right? Get them to just kind of like, kind of analyze what just happened so they can try to fix it in the future. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so the section is struggling to breathe. Um, so if this is the scenario, uh, here are again some ideas, you can just let them know, hey, can you focus on your breathing this time? Um, I feel like we're not making it all the way to the end of the phrase. You can say something like that, just inform them, very possible they weren't thinking about it. You can also review because it's possible they were thinking about it, but don't know how to execute a good breath for singing. So my recommendation would be to use some terminology that your director uses when um, he or she talks about that uh, to remind how to do breathing. You can also ask for suggestions from your section. Um, you know them best, so that may or may not be a good idea for your particular section, but it's possible. Um, you can do a quick breathing exercise where you breathe in and out on a have them do it again, have them focus on certain parts of their body, making sure they're noticing what their rib cage is doing, what their stomach is doing, what their shoulders are doing, right? All of those things. Um, again, to kind of to kind of pair that with talking about how to take a good breath, just kind of engaging those muscles and reminding ourselves how to do that. And then sing the line. Um, another one, I love this one, is to bubble. Um, so you can use a lip trill on every other phrase. So for harmonize the world, that might be. I hope and pray we'll be together. You get the idea, I hope, right? So, so you you just go back and forth. Um, and I like to give a cue, like I say, okay, when I clap, you're gonna switch to the other 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 way. So if you're bubbling, you're gonna sing. If you're singing, you're gonna bubble. Just because not everybody knows like where each phrase is necessarily. Something you could talk about, but just to make it easy. Um, and that's really great because if you bubble before you sing and then you just sing the whole thing outright awesome, but it's easy to forget what that breath and that consistency of air should feel like by the time you get to the end of the song versus when you're at the beginning and you just did the bubbling. So by alternating back and forth, you're really experiencing what should this feel like? Okay, now I'm going to do it. What should this feel like? Okay, now I'm going to do it. Awesome. Uh, and then another reason that your section might be struggling to breathe is that the phrase is really long and your director said, don't breathe. <laughs> So um, rather than overthrowing your director and, you know, grabbing your pitchfork because people need to breathe. Yes. Yes. I know. Okay. Staggered breathing is super important. Um, and your section might not know about staggered breathing. So it's really important to talk to them about that and say, hey, as a reminder, you don't need to sing all the way through this phrase. <laughs> you just can't let the director catch you. That's the secret. So, so how do we do that, right? And talk about how to do it in a way that um, that is silent or very quiet, that doesn't make a big motion either on your mouth or with your shoulders, right? That people would see. Um, so just reminding them how to do that and then trying to execute it in your sectional. And if you notice that everybody takes catch breath in the same spot, maybe just say, okay, try somewhere different and see what happens then, right? Um, I... I don't often get to the point where I'm like, okay, you measure two, beat two, breathe. You measure four, beat three, breathe. Um, just because I find it really tedious and I think there are other ways to get there more quickly. And one of them is just, cool, try to breathe somewhere else this time. Don't breathe where you just breathed, try somewhere else. 
Um, because once you've taken out all of the really logical places to catch breath, people tend to start to just do them in random places, which is awesome. Or I'll say, um, okay, now take a breath way before you need it. Um, or just find other ways to vary it. Okay. All right. I've got one more. I'm actually going to stay on the slide for a second. I've got one more of these slides with a whole bunch of information. And then I'm going to ask, um, ask you to engage with me a little bit more. So thank you for your patience. I'm hoping this is really helpful. All of these things are going to be shared with you at the end. So if you've been vigorously taking notes, I so appreciate you. And I'm sure your handwriting practice is going awesome, but it's not necessary. So um, moving right along, one more. The section does not sound like a unit. Um, so I have a caveat with this one. There are, there are a few schools of thinking about this, about what causes blend to be blendy and what to do about it. So I'm not going to get super in depth with this today, um, but I'm going to talk about just a couple of things that I think would be helpful no matter which camp you, you live in or your director lives in. So again, number one, if your section does not sound like a unit, just say, hey, I'm hearing a lot of individual voices. I'd love to hear a unit sound because maybe they weren't thinking about it because you know they couldn't breathe for that whole phrase, <laughs> whatever it was. Um, another thing you can do is to remind your section that blend comes from everyone singing with a relaxed and authentic sound. Um, I'm now gonna take a brief pause to crawl under my desk because I plugged my computer in here, but not to the wall, so. Give me one moment, please. I'm back. <laughs> there, now I won't bail on you in the middle of the presentation. Um, so making sure that everybody is taking good breaths and using a technique that your director talks about in rehearsal um, for singing. And then finally, this one. Um, <laughs> so you can have them stand in a big group, like a clump, and all face random directions. And they'll all feel very silly and it's very fun. And then you have each member individually rotate slowly in whichever direction they wish. Um, and it's kind of like, like imagine cogs moving each other, right? I guess that would go that way. But in any case, um, because you can have them focus on like listening to each other. I specifically do this for, I wrote volume samification. I am 99.9% .9 words sure samification is not a word, but it seemed like the perfect thing in that sentence. So there it is. Um, to focus on on making the volume the same for um, for the section. This is one of the techniques that I have used before, just getting them to listen to each other. So uh, there you have it. Now let's do something different. Oh, I had one more. Dang it. Sorry, forgot I put this in here. It's important, but I'll go quick. Um, if your section is singing tentatively, again, they might not just be thinking about it. And then this one is important. Um, part of your job as a leader in your chorus is to help create the culture. So you are partially responsible for your chorus being super positive or um, hardworking or persistent or um, friendly to outsiders or, right, I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Like you have a role in that. Everybody in your chorus does, but especially as leaders, um, you can help create that. So you can create a culture in your sectional where everyone sings confidently, even if they're not sure of the notes, even if they're not sure of the rhythms, even if it's not perfect, still sing confidently. Um, it's important to make mistakes during the learning process. Uh, it's just a part of it. And a lot of musicians I have met are perfectionists, including myself and probably several of you. <laughs> Uh, we don't like to make mistakes because mistakes are wrong, dang it, and not on the path to perfection. But when you're learning something new, they're they're just part of it. So reminding your section that that's expected can make them feel a little bit safer. Like, okay, it's all right if I make a mistake. Um, also, as a section leader, 
you can't fix what you can't hear. So if you suspect that there's a part that is um, probably incorrect for some of your section leaders or for some of your members, but they've all gotten kind of quiet when you get there, or the ones who aren't sure about it have gotten quiet when they get there, um, you're not going to be able to fix that because <laughs> you don't know what's happening. Uh, I, my very first year of teaching, I had an eighth grade choir and um, I had a bunch of kids that were super confident singers. And then I had this one girl and she was super shy, so kind, but just super shy. And she just always like was whisper singing like very quietly. And then um, the concert came and I gave an instruction to be confident, uh, which in hindsight was not the best instruction to give in that moment in that way. Because we went on stage and my little shy girl was confident and loud. And that was the day I learned she did not know how to match pitch. So <laughs> if we had figured that out, if I had figured that out like months before that, <laughs> I could have definitely gotten her ready for that concert, but I couldn't hear it. So I couldn't fix it. I'm not saying something as dramatic as that's going to happen in your sectional, but it is important to <laughs> uh, be able to hear things. So you can tell your section that. Also, you can get your section singing and moving really confidently and then go tell your director, hey, we worked on confidence. Can you see if you can notice it? And then put them back on the risers with the rest of the ensemble, with the rest of the chorus. And if you're very lucky, your director will say, oh my gosh, leads, you, you are so confident right now. You must have worked on that, which would be great. It's great reinforcement. So um, quick thing, confidence is not the same as volume. You can sing confidently and quietly. You can sing confidently and loudly, just for the record. Okay, that was my last thing. Whew. All right, next, I'm going to invite you to put any other common issues or issues that you've faced as a section leader into the chat. What things have you heard your section do and you're just like, I don't know how to fix this, or maybe you had an immediate thing, but it happens a lot or something like that. I'm looking at the chat to see how you're, what you're thinking about that. I'm actually going to stop my share for a moment or two here. Okay, so I'm looking for common issues in sectionals that I did not go over. There are about a million and two. Um, I went over four of them, I think, so it happens. But I did try to hit the most common ones. If you can't think of anything, I got you. Give just a couple more, maybe a minute more here. Mm. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Good. Um, Candace, would you feel comfortable unmuting and telling me more about what you mean by members don't show and don't let me know? Do you mean like they're not present at rehearsal? Yes, they, um, they don't let me know they're not coming to rehearsal and they don't show up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Okay, and let me see what was the last one. Various levels of ability and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so Sydney, I'm actually gonna address that. Um, I feel like there's unfortunately not, actually, I've just changed my mind. Yeah, I like it, I like it. To be clear, I liked it before, but I wasn't sure it would fit exactly with the activity we're going to do next, um, but I think it will. So I'm feeling excited about that. Okay, so 
Um, what I've done is I have created a Google slide that I'm now going to share with you <clears throat> for you to look at. And this is solutions and common things that happen. So I've talked to you an awful lot today. Thank you very much for listening and being so patient. Um, and what this is, is at the top of each slide, it says the issue. The section doesn't know the notes. Or down here, I've now added, you have a chronic follower in your section, or you have various levels of ability in your section, right? Um, or the section does not sound like a unit. And if you see things that are already written right here, those are the things that I talked about already. Okay, so that's what the the existing bullet points are, which is why I have nothing under members not present because I didn't talk about that in my presentation so far. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to share the link with you to this presentation. You're going to click on the link. You're going to go through. You don't have to start at the beginning. You can start at the end and work your way back. You can start in the middle, wherever you want and go through and think. If you've had a chronic follower in your section, what have you done? What solutions have you come up with? Go ahead and write your solution. You can type it right in. Um, I will also be adding things to the, the three new um, slides, but feel free for you to add something in. The section does not sound like a unit. If you have had something that you've tried that has worked really well, I would love to hear about it. And my plan is to share this presentation again after the workshop so that you have all of these things readily available. So you can go and say, okay, I'm going to go to this slide. My section does not sound like a unit. What can we do? Well, here are seven or eight things I can try. Okay, so that's the idea. I'm going to go ahead and throw the link to this in the chat any second now. It's going to be great. Here it is. Okay, if you can't do it, um, it's okay to just put it in the Zoom chat um, and just say what, what thing you're talking about, right? So like um, wrong notes and then say your solution. Uh, and I can add it to the slide that way too. It's going to be a little bit of a free for all for a second as we all get in here and we're all typing in the same boxes. So feel free if there are a bunch of people on your slide, you can just jump to another one and come back to it in a second. And I'm going to give you a second to go through and just add some things. If you've got anything you've used and you've loved.
some great things getting added here. Sorry if I scared you. <laughs> Again, feel free to go back and add to um, the four topics. Maybe it's five. Yes, five topics that I talked about earlier. Um, if you had another thought while I was talking, you're like, oh man, she also should have included X, Y, Z. Feel free to add that. These are really great ideas on the chronic follower, the members not present, and the levels of ability. I'm going to give about 60 more seconds and then we're going to go ahead and move on. Feel free to continue to adding, adding to this um, uh, when you move on to the next step or even after the presentation. If you want to just keep it open, you're welcome to do that as you think of things and add. Awesome. Okay. I see um, a few comments have been added to the chat. I'll go ahead and add those into the um, into the slideshow when we're done here. Um, let me make sure that that's actually going to happen because I'm saving chat. Okay. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move on again. If you're finishing your thought, go ahead and do that um, in the Google Slides presentation. Um, but I am going to head to the next thing here. So, um, I have a thing, there it is, <laughs> that I wanted to quickly talk through with you. Um, I have a few of these scenarios, but we'll just do this one um, based on time. Um, I wanted to take you through the process of what you hear in rehearsal uh, and how to get to the solution part um, with kind of some of the steps we talked about in last night's class, as well as today. So let's say you hear strained singing, you hear pressure, you hear pushing, you hear tension. Um, what are some of the causes of that? What could be happening? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute and talk to me. Body alignment and faces, yeah. Yeah, strained, a strained sound can definitely come from body being out of alignment. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. Okay, tension. So too much subglottal pressure for the amount of air, right? Um, yeah, these are great. Oh man, a bunch of them just came in. Uh, so having the throat being really tense or being really tense actually anywhere in your body can cause uh, strange singing. Trying too hard to hear yourself. So just like singing really loud with no regard for like how you're singing potentially. Um, vocal placement is wrong. So I'm going to kind of tie that in with like making sure it's relaxed, a relaxed sound. Um, yeah, these are great. So it could be a whole host of things. So 
you would go through with some of the tools that Drew talked to you about yesterday and figure out what you think it is, right? You might look around, okay, everybody's standing with like perfect alignment, amazing. Um, so it can't be that. Um, you're noticing that everybody's also singing three times as loud as they usually are. So you might ask a question, hey, uh, I'm noticing that you're singing really loud here, but my music, like I thought that the director said to sing at like a medium volume, what's going on, right? Those kinds of things. Yeah. Yes, Allison, trying to sing high notes in chest voice or voice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with and that can sometimes bring in extra tension, right? Okay. So diagnose it. And then finally, we're going to solve the issue. So let's say the issue is they're strained singing because they are singing super loudly with no regard for how they're singing. So what are some solutions? If you've determined that's probably the issue, what could you do? Peg, I like that. Singing with confidence does not mean throwing skills out the door. So true. <laughs> what could we do? What advice might we give our section or what technique might we try? Again, they're singing three times as loud as they need to be. And it's just like very tense and like strained. Mm -hmm. Ask them to sing with beauty, not volume. Yeah, one of my favorite professors used to say, um, never sing louder than beautiful. <laughs> what about cool. adding more air? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. You could add more air. Mm -hmm. Balancing out that subglottal pressure. Yep. For sure. Ask them to relax. Ah, oh, yes. Good. <laughs> this is awesome. And I know you have a million more ideas. I'm seeing them pop into the chat immediately. You're doing great. Um, so we, we are just about a minute out. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it to the end here um, and ask if anybody has any questions. I'm skipping my closing activity in, uh, in lieu of time here. Anybody have any questions for me? I'll throw my email in the chat also if you want to message me later. If your questions are about Drew's class or my class or either way, I know things, things and stuff. You have 58 seconds if you want to ask a question, make it a good one. Just kidding. It can be whatever. <laughs> Will we receive your PowerPoint? Yes, Candace, I will make sure that that happens. It's not just my PowerPoint, it's your PowerPoint too, because you all contributed to it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You bet, thank you very much. It was good to be here today. I hope this gave you some really good ideas on things to try that maybe you haven't tried before. And I hope they work. See you all in the main room. Thanks, Sydney.